Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post, and you join me today for another episode in Transport Fever 2 on my Bristol map. And this is the bustling, hustling, possibly rustling. I'm not sure about that yet. <laughs> the metropolis of Bristol, made up of many interconnected towns, suburbs, and villages. And we have finally reached the year of 1950. So what I'm going to do, as I did previously when we hit 1900, is I'm going to separate the remaining, the next set of videos for the 1950s up to the year 1999 into a separate little playlist, kind of season three, if you will, of this series. Yeah, so if you're not interested in the earliest years of this map, then you can just catch up and follow this particular series, uh, series three, the 1950s to 2000 in Bristol. Transport Fever 2. Yes, so uh, let's get the actual map back, all the goodies on there. Just sort of thought I'd show off how fabulous Bristol looks. Actually, if I turn it off for a second more, let's go a bit closer. Because it does look, I mean, it does look like that is. <laughs> now, of course, this is, this development, this, this expanse of urbanisation is due to the design of the map, which I took from Specialist zero there's a link to, to his map on the on steam in the description below i modified it a little bit took out a couple of towns added industries and stuff but essentially it's his creation of the west of england and south wales and he put a number of towns together as you can see here so we could get this wonderful sprawl that is modern day bristol and talking of modern day bristol yeah look we see I've mentioned it before, we've got traffic jams all the way pretty much from Canesham. Where's Canesham? There's Brislington. Uh, there's Canesham. Okay, it doesn't quite, or oh, it does actually stretch back to Canesham <laughs> all the way through Brislington, all the way into the heart of the metropolis. It very much does remind me of my days when I used to travel to work in Bristol. Thankfully, I worked uh, on the uh, outskirts of Bristol sort of round here so uh, I didn't have to go all the way through the city centre which was a great relief but even so the traffic was horrific back in the day but we're not quite there yet we've got a few years <laughs> I'm not quite that old uh, before we get to that so there's a number of things we need to do we need to address the capacity issues on our station which actually talking of stations reminds me to say hi to JC1028 yeah, I think that was your ID. Commented on a previous video, might have been the last one or it might have been the one before that, when I was tinkering about over here in South Wales and sort of building my seven tunnel uh, connection between Bristol and South Wales. And I left behind the stations of Caldicott and indeed this bus stop here. In fact, I think, no, I think I have got rid of the piers. Oh no, I've left the pier over there. New Passage Pier. Left them behind, and as JC1028 correctly commented, uh, I'm still paying maintenance on these, which I am, but it's a relatively minor figure compared to the whole expense of running the entire network. I've kind of left them on there as a homage, if you will, to the abandoned rail network elements uh, that were left over following the beaching cuts and so on. Uh, which happened, I think, in the 1960s, yeah, or early 70s, somewhere around there, years ago, anyway, uh, when lots of the real railway network was simply destroyed and ripped up. So I'm leaving those abandoned stations there just for historical purposes, really. But that did actually tie into something I discovered around the same time, in fact, just coincidentally. There is one of the buttons down here at the bottom, the station statistics, which lists all the stations you've got. Not just that, it tells you where they are. So, well, actually, one of the issues I've got in this map is because we're sprawling so much here, it's difficult to tell. Is this stop here, Victoria Street, is that in Kingsdown, Brandon Hill, or is it in Clifton? I don't know. But if I actually go to Victoria Street here, I've been trying to give all my bus stops and indeed train stations unique names, sort of local names, as it were. Uh, relative to where they are, relevant to where they are, that is, Victor, where it's a long way down. It's in Brandon Hill. Yeah, so you can tell where they are. But the other great thing about it is it tells you how many passengers or cargo are waiting and also how overloaded they are. Yeah, so you can see here the dockside. Uh, let's go there. 
Yeah, so it's not just passengers that are overloaded. Yeah, docks, I need to address that. Uh, Filton Central. That looks like a, I think that's a bus station, isn't it? Filton Central. Yeah, you're overloading. Oh my goodness, you are too. Yeah, and so, so it's great for giving you that information. You can, of course, get this through the overlays. Uh, where is it? Stations? Yeah, stations. Yeah, so as you can see there, Filton Central is very busy, overcrowded, and people will stop waiting. I, I don't know if they actually stop going, but the effect is probably that much the same. You get more congestion on the roads, which you really do not want, and uh, less profit, which you really do want. The other thing it gives you is the maintenance. So it's very easy to tell here by clicking this, getting that into order, which is your most expensive station, bus stop or whatever. And in fact, it turns out to be Royal Portbury Dock. Which you may remember, I spent some time tinkering and faffing around with to make it look vaguely realistic in terms of a dock, which it does. A very few of these objects here, these landings and these uh, warehouses and stuff, actually do anything useful, but they are costing me a fair amount of money. But they look good, they look good, so it's worth it, as far as I'm concerned, it's worth it. So we're gonna leave that there. But yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd introduce that. I, I saw it before, I think, somewhere when I was first getting to know the game. It's one of those things you kind of forget because, well, because you're so interested in getting the map going and the map working and so on. You don't worry about the data details, as it were. But I love, I love that. That's that's. I like that. You know me. I love data. Anyway, since you were last with me and we turned over into 1950, we're currently in May 1950 now. I've done a little bit of preparatory work in attempts to sort of ease some of the congestion. I'm not sure I'm doing it right, to be honest, because we're going here to the Kingswood, Hanham, St. George area of Bristol, which wasn't connected before. I think St. George was. There was a bus line into Eastern St. Paul's, which were connected to the train station. But these towns up here aren't getting cargo. Uh, so they're not developing in terms of commercial and residential, uh, sorry, commercial and industrial areas. So there's a not a great deal of traffic going between them. But uh, apart, as you can see, St George here is developing quite nicely because it is connected to the inter into the city of Bristol. But uh, Hannam's a little bit, Kingswood not so much. Brislington's doing reasonably well because it does have bus connections. But places like Warmley are just, well, they're not warm at all. They're very cold in terms of development. So by building connections here, I am going to exacerbate my congestion problems. But I'm hoping it's the first step on fixing it by getting lots of bus routes, train routes and stuff set up. Now I've put all these in already, so if we go to our new lines, uh, bus routes around here. Yeah, I haven't put buses on them yet. So I've created some new routes between Kingswood and St George so they can get into the train station from there and obviously the rest of the network between Kingswood and Hannam. That's quite a yeah, roundabout kind of one and also St George to, oh, between Kingswood and St George. That's right, Kingswood to St George. Uh, I've added another one between St George and Easton because there's parts of Easton up here which weren't being addressed by our existing bus stops and so on, so I've brought those into the connection and just make more connections between more places, which should, of course, help grow the cities. Uh, now, one I, I want, a couple more I actually want to do before we get on to doing the fun things with trains and stuff. So I want to bring Warmly in as well. I think one thing I was doing while you were away was actually upgrading the roads as well. Because uh, they're currently cobbled. Um, most of them actually are cobbled. They are running at 30 miles an hour, which is good, which is, unless you're going for four lane streets, is, is the fastest you're going to get, basically. I just don't like the idea of cobbles, it just seems weird in 1950. So I was thinking of upgrading them all to tarmac. I don't like this. No, that, that, that line there doesn't work for me, so let's get rid of you. Uh, we'll put you back in a moment. So let's upgrade these here to, to that. So this is a nice, see there's plenty of traffic there from Warmly. They obviously want to go somewhere. Uh, down here, say probably have you coming out here. We'll probably want to connect you up. Um, Kingswood, I'm not sure. Oh, let's do it. 
That's nearly a million dollars just to move eight buildings. Thankfully, I can take lots of money out now. As I had hoped, 1950 means I can take more money out and I've already taken out the 50 million. But what I discovered was you can actually go beyond 50 million. For some reason, I had it in my head that 50 million was the largest loan I could take out. But it's, it's not. Well, I'm going to leave it at 50 for the moment, so, which, which seems enough. So, where do we want our bus stops? I've been trying to do it rationally. I don't often do this, but making use of the overlays. Now, we do know that people like to travel between residence and work and residence and shop. So that's where we want our sort of bus stops to connect. Uh, not residence to residence, because people don't go to each other's houses. A bit like lockdown, really, isn't it? Uh, so <laughs> where should we put our bus stops in warmly? Uh, we'll use the ones without bus signs. Uh, I think if we put you up here, okay, again, I'll put them on both sides of the road, even though I may well not be using both sides of the bus stop. That's fine. Uh, perhaps down here. Uh, yeah, I think that will do. Well, that road isn't complete, so that, that saves me spending money on a road. And the residential areas. Mm. Yeah, let's, let's take it from here, I think. Right, uh, but more than connecting the, the districts in this particular town, obviously I want to connect them to the rest of the network, so let's uh, crack on with that. We will connect you. Uh, let's see. Be nice to actually connect you in here to this network as well so hopefully that will save congestion on this bit of road here so where will we go um, well if we start from this side actually we start from there uh, what color do I want uh, nice bright yellow will you work yeah I'm not using yellow anywhere else there uh, if we go from there to Could go here or here. Again, actually, if we bring our overlays into play, uh, so that's residential. Yeah, let's let's bring them to. I don't know. Don't go there because you've got that bus stop is both in use. Both uh, both sides are in use. So we'll take you to Courtney Road. Yeah, and then we'll bring you back into Warmley, to the High Street. To Mill Lane and to St John's Road. Uh, now don't. Um, uh, why has it done that? Uh, if I change you to go to the other. Mm, no, I'm not convinced by that. Perhaps if that one was down there, it would work better. But no, no, that's okay. I suppose. So we might. Yeah, if we put a bus stop in here. Would it take the people from there to there? No, let's not bother. I think, I think we'll deal with that. That's fine. I'll rename these streets to be sort of warmly specific uh, momentarily. But let's call this, what should we call this? Warmly Kingswood, because that's what it does, I think. Okay, and I also would like to bring in Rislington as well into this connection. So what do we have around here in terms of our routes? Yes, I think if we bring Brislington in here to whereabouts can we go? Ah, again, that one, that one there works, I think. Again, let's look at our land use. So if we're bringing them in, and we have got a stop I'm not using here, right in the centre of Brislington. I think it was it, when I first set my connections up between Brislington and Bristol City Centre. That was the one I used. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a place I know, <laughs> which is why I was keen to use it. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're a good mix, actually, of places. So 
I think, which direction you go? Yeah, I think if we bring you in round here, we can actually follow the blue line almost, couldn't we? Okay, let's do that. Let's create ourselves a new line. And which colour shall we use for this? Nice green. Nice bright green. So we'll go from Emery Road. We'll come in here to the High Street, to Wesley Avenue, and to Mount Hill Road. I think that's a nice route. Con connecting all the, di the three different types of residents three different land types if I can get the words out right so where's that going that's Brislington right so yeah we'll call that one Brislington ha Brislington to Hannam because that's where it's going we don't have any buses on these routes yet so let's get some going uh, do I have oh, I have a depot down there which might be handy for a couple of routes but it's not much use to any of the others I know there are industrial estates in and around warmly we could do that again let's have a look at our land use yeah I, th I think a depot around here somewhere this is probably Kingswood actually more than warmly but yeah it's, it's all no don't say it's all the same because you'll offend the locals don't say that because that would be silly uh, we want a road depot can I slip you in here for a modest cost 37 can I make it cheaper than that? Oh, yes, I can. So if we put you there, that is splendid. Right, so how many of these buses do I want? We're going to use this Tusha, the Saura, uh, largely because we don't have any in-town roads, which is what most of their driving will be on, which go above 30 miles an hour. So it's pointless having a 47 mile an hour bus That'd be fine if we had highways between our towns, but we don't yet, so. Okay, I think I've got five. So if we put four on each, that's 20, isn't it? Well, let's start with 16, which cost me two and a half million. Okay, so we'll take the first four of those and we will stick you on, yeah, Brislington to Hannam line. There you go. We'll take the next four. And you can go on the. Is that Hannam Kingswood? It's almost as if I know what I'm doing, as if I remember what I'd planned. Uh, you can go on the Warm Leader Kingswood. And these last four can go on this brown line. Kingswood to St George. That's a very simple line, isn't it? Right, excellent. So, how many more lines do we have? Aha, so it's just a St George to Eastern. So, yeah, we'll take you from here. So, that will be another four of you. One, two, three, four. By you. We'll stick you on uh, whatever that line was called. <laughs> It was a grey one, wasn't it? St George to Eastern. There you go. Right. Okay, let's get that rocking. Now, one thing I wanted to do here as well is, I mean, buses are fine, but people like travelling at greater speeds than that, and that means trains. It would be nice to bring these suburban areas, if I can call them that, into the centre of Bristol by train as well. And this... Does this look like a li nice open space where you could stick a train line? It does. And it just so happens that in Bristol Temple Meads here, I do, I do still have a spare platform. Where is it? Right. So it will need to be... Oh, have I sorted these out? I've sorted these out already. That's excellent. Right. So yeah, so we've got our two lines coming down from Parkway and from Seven Beach up there. And, yep, we've got these lines here. So this fourth terminal here can be for our new line going out to Hannon, wherever it is. I'm, I'm just... One thing that occurred to me um, when I was doing those couple of shorts, which you may have seen, is I've actually got no through services here from Bath through Bristol Temple Meads to anywhere else. Whereas, of course, there are through trains which go... I think they are going to go through rather than turn around. Uh, from Bath, say, to... Uh, to Western Supermare, 
or to South Wales and places like that. Uh, I've, yeah, again, my orientation of the station here is is wrong in terms of reality, so that's it's less easy, I think, to get those through routes. But I, I will, I'll try and get some in. So we'll probably do more expansion of Bristol Temple Meads in due course. Anyway, let's get this station in here, shall we? Um, we don't want the tenery. It's going to be. I'm going to stick it on the end here, so it's going to be one of those. We're still using the GWR Brown. Uh, do we need just one track? Probably, I think. Let me stick you in here-ish. Then bring you into the station from there. Could, put, could I put you in here? Or... Actually, I'm wondering if I if it would be worth sticking it in this orientation. Whoops! Don't do that. Do that. This orientation, so I could then get services going out to the east, as it were, to Bath, Bathwick, and so on, from this sort of North Bristol area, or curve round and go to Puckle Church, Emerson Green and Yate from here. Ah, I like that idea actually. I do. Okay, so we will, I th um, oh, the, the trouble then is, <laughs> is getting it in from Bristol Temple Meads. Because it's not going to be a long station. I'm, no, I'm not sure that will work then. If I, put, if I put it in here, I could do that. Right, let's uh, change these roads up a little bit, shall we? I think to make this work, so we need to connect you to there. Right, so I can then take this bit of road out. Okay. Uh, what, are you 20 miles an hour? You are. No, can't be doing that. You need to be fast as well. Uh, right, so that doesn't affect my roots particularly, does it? Why? Who's that? Why is that? Where's that green one going? Bristol to Hannah. What are you doing? Oh, I don't like that at all. I'm going to leave that for the time being. Uh, I may come back and worry about that later once we've got this station in, because that may actually change things up for me. So we want to get rid of this road. We're going to put a station in here. It's going to be two tracks. Two, not three, two tracks. Okay. Uh, we don't want a big building. Actually, does the... So that's what it looks like. And then you've got the medium building. What's a smaller building look like? Much the same, I think. <laughs> yeah, that, that's possibly an issue with the terminal station. Okay. Save a little bit of money. Yeah, 100,000 or so, or less than that. But okay, that works for me. Right, let's get you in there. And some tracks. We're not going to use fast track, I think, because it is a very local service, so they're not going to be terribly fast. We want to get it into Bristol Temple Meads here. Right, so how are we going to get it out of here? I'd like to spend as little time interfering with the express services as we can. So you're going... Up. Okay, let's get rid of that signal. as I say, with the express services too much. And I don't want to be too slow either. Actually, that looks quite good. That's 49 there, though, isn't it? Now, if I do that, how much of this can I delete? I can delete that. Excellent. And then start taking it off at a faster speed. How does that affect the speed of the, the track I had already? Where's the speed thing? 
No, no, no. Uh, speak, there you are. Oh yeah, that's good, that's good. They're all they're all fast. Right, so can I get there? Going to remove a building, are we? Oh yeah, yeah, wait. Well if you're gonna build a house on mm, yeah. <laughs> Very suspicious place to build a house, to be honest, boys, but right. To there. So can I Right, can I do? If I did the parallel tracks, will this work? Now, the parallel track, I think, is built on the left. If I remember the rules correctly. So, can I put you straight into there? That looks good. And... It works! Right, that saved me a little bit of time anyway. Right, so, what that means is we will probably want some track coming out of here, going really slowly up there. Let's get rid of that. And you will probably want to get rid of that road as well. But this is just planning stage stuff at the moment. It's very slow. I don't think I can make it that much faster. If I go back further... Oh, it's a bit faster actually. Okay, we'll, we'll try it like that. I'm slightly concerned with how close we are to the actual station <laughs> platform itself. Right, so we'll put you in there. We're not going to put that line in yet. Uh, that will be for a moment or two, well, an episode later. All right, and... Now this, yeah, how's it going to come into the station from down there? Coming to that one. Ah, now if I double slip. No, don't do that. Do that. If I double I can double slip that. That's excellent. So then come in on that platform. Um, no, it's coming in on the left, isn't it? Yes, we can. Oh, I can double slip there and then go out on that one. Yeah, that's fine. That is fine. And you can come in on here. And you could actually double slip, I think, across from there. Let's see if that works. Let's put some signals in. Uh, which one should we use? We'll use our standard three aspect on a pole. So we'll keep you fairly close because you're the local service, so you want to hold you up. There you are, from there. And coming in. Yeah, we'll hold you up. That's that's okay, I think. And going out from there. Should I turn the auto signal on? Will that place the signals automatically? It has. Excellent. Okay, but not there because it's, it's not quite far enough. There we go. And on you. I don't know, I'll be paying maintenance on these. I want these to be one way. I'm always doing this. I'm forgetting that. Signals in the other direction. Excellent. Right. Oh, we might as well build our line, haven't we? So it's going to be a new line. Well, let's auto save uh, departs. I don't want a white line. Uh, orange. I don't think I'm using orange into Bristol Temple Mead. So that to there. Uh, platform four, excellent. Right, so they're all in use, and you are double tracking perfectly. Excellent result. It's exactly what I wanted. So, what should we call this? It's the Bristol to Hannam line. So, let's have a look at our trains. And having passed 1950, we should have some new locomotives, some new diesels, and electrics. Well, one other little thing I did when I put this. A big multi depot mod asset down. Uh, all the depots were called the same thing Redcliffe de Train Depot. So I've renamed them, or a number of them, the ones I've connected anyway, so I can easily check which one is which. So yeah, just click on that and yeah, you change it there, just click the pen icon, the pencil icon, whichever. 
and that should allow you to change that depot. So I'm in depot one, so it should come out on, yep, these tracks here, which should allow it to connect to the right platform straight off. So what do we have? Right, uh, diesels. Uh, 84, that's a bit fast, I think, for a local service. Yeah, we're not going to use you. Electrics. I've not electrified the line. Do we have any new ones here? No, none of these are new as such. We haven't looked at them in the past, to be honest, because I haven't got much electrification going on. And multiple units. We've got you, you're 78. Oh, we got the rail bus. I'm not sure, is that a European? It's, I don't believe it's a British uh, model as such. You only go 56 and you carry 15. You are quite cheap though. Could use you. And the Brighton Bell, which we saw in a previous episode, which has a little glitching problem with the cab cam. Uh, so I'm sort of avoiding that one, I'm afraid. It looks a bit odd as well as a train in its own right. So, okay, so what have we got in terms of steam then? Oops, don't go there, stay there. And our latest locomotives, all these are looking good. 175, you'll be quite good. Yeah, 932. You're not terribly powerful. Um, but you could work. These other ones look a bit too big and beefy. Oh, and you're, you're 60. You're less powerful again. Um, I'm not sure how we'll be carrying that many passengers at the moment, but I'd like something which actually could travel a you're quite good actually. 60 and 130 uh, million and million, 1,030. Um, but you are a little bit expensive compared to this one here. You know what? I'm actually going 100,000 more expensive. How many wagons can we put on this one? Let's try this one. Uh, what wagons do we have for passengers? Go at go at 80, too fast. We've got 60, sorry, we've got 75 mile an hour maximum on our loco, so we don't want new. Ooh, you're, okay, we'll go with you. 20 people, that's that's a nice number as well. Uh, so we'll add you. And you. Ah, okay. We'll try it at 40 to start with, I think. That's, that's already 6 million, good grief. So we'll buy one of you, and we'll stick you. The best order Hannah line. And, whoops, there you go. Let's see what you look like. You're going to come out the deck. Oh, here you come. Are you coming out? Splendid. Again, another lovely modded locomotive, which will be in my collection on Steam. Oh, there goes the Express to Bath. And there'll be a link to that in the description below if you want to check out all these mods. How are we doing? I love how busy this station is. That is, of course, too busy. Oh, wow, we've already got five people. Excellent. Oh, more trains coming in. And while we're here, actually, we'll let that one carry on but let's have a look at how well our profits are doing uh, on our lines uh, we want everything everywhere uh, yeah I noticed this actually in the previous the last episode Bristol to Parkway to Clifton line it's not doing terribly well not doing terribly good business actually if we get the line up itself and the finances yeah, the last few years have been poor, very poor indeed. Possibly because we now have new services direct from Temple Meads, which go out to the uh, to, to the Seven Seven Beach, and more importantly, to Bristol Parkway. So yeah, that takes a different route from there, doesn't it? We bring that line up, Bristol Midland line. Yes, yeah, so that goes out there. So I think that's where most of the traffic to Parkway will be going through. In fact, yeah, that's a very profitable line. But what I'm thinking is actually decommissioning that line, doing a bit of a beaching. 
Should we let them actually get into into the station? Yeah, half, barely half capacity. So I could cut the capacity down, I suppose, a little bit. There are three wagons on there, after all. Let's see if that would help. Let's see how much they make when they come into station. one here. There we go. Oh, that's a seven beach line pulling out. Just missed your connection, I'm afraid, chaps. 108,000. That's not bad, but you're taking again just over a dozen people back. Okay, let's see if I can if I can just edit these trains and cut down the capacity. So if we take a wagon off, I don't like decommissioning services like this, but you know that may be for the best. So we'll take you down and see if that helps. Okay, where was the other poor line? Oh no, it's gone. Oh no, there it there it is. Bedminster to Brandon Hill. It's a single train line, isn't it? Or a line with a single train on it, because it's a very short local service. Using a very old train, I think. 27 years? Those are very old wagons. And how full are you? Again, yeah, you're not even half full. But still, still loads of traffic going around here. What should we do with that service? It doesn't really exist in real life, so there's no harm in cutting it out. I just like having this extra train going into Bedminster, which of course it doesn't do in real life. There is only the two platforms. I think only the two platforms at Bedminster. I don't think I've ever actually stopped at Bedminster Station. Passed through it a few times, but okay. Let's uh, see if we can again edit this one down. Take you out. So that's a 32 capacity. And I'll keep an eye on that, and we'll check in on them in the next episode. Oh, one other thing I don't think I meant... Did I mention this when we came in to the episode? Uh, I did this off-camera, is I've high-speeded all the express track for the trains, particularly for the Bristol Western Express, so they can actually get up to proper speed. The vehicles themselves are capable of 100 miles an hour, yeah. So obviously having a standard 75, 75 mile an hour maximum track on there, you know, disadvantages them against the local stopping service. So we've done that. Right, I think that will do for this episode. Uh, we've added a brand new service connected, ooh, four different towns. How are these buses doing, by the way, before we depart? They're all losing money and not carrying passengers. That's disappointing. Have, actually, I've been in pause mode most of the time, to be honest. That's hardly surprising. Uh, warmly to Kingswood. Oh, you've picked up passengers. Well, you are coming straight out the depot there. Oh, there are passengers waiting. Two. Five. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. There are passengers waiting. Good. How are we doing in... No, you're not doing any business at all. No. Oh, you have carried some passengers. That's something at least. Uh, I'm just thinking, actually. Might move this bus stop here. So it's actually closer to the train station. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Right, I'll be doing that, but I'll do that off camera. In the meantime, though, um, I'll smooth this out, and then I can give you a sort of cab ride thing. On this new line between Hannum and... Bristol Temple Mead. And that would be lovely, wouldn't it? I think. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Transport Fever. If you have, it'd be great to hear from you. A little bit of a like would be lovely. Even better though, if you've got any thoughts, ideas, recommendations, suggestions, anything at all to say about what we're doing in the game, it'd be great to hear from you. Just drop a note into the comments box below. And if you've not subscribed to the channel already, you can do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play videos. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Transport Fever 2. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.